that's going to go up here. And here's the little cup foot. That's going to go down there. And then I've been teaching a class here all week long to four lovely ladies who are around here somewhere. They can tell you all about it. And we're, we've been talking a lot about seals, sealing glass to itself, sort of making welds, and how hot seals are really good for some stuff, and cold seals you want to avoid if you're trying to avoid them. So I've made the tiniest seal, <laughs> little animal, and the little seal is going to go in the little stem. And then there's this itty bitty little beach ball that's going to hang above the little seal. So I'm going to finish up this side of the stem to look like this side. I'm going to show you how I bend all these little handly things and then put it all together and hopefully it'll be a thing. If all goes well, it will be a thing. I'm going to start out, I'm going to just show you how I spun out this foot because that's sort of exciting. It's one of the least boring parts. So I'm just going to do that in clear just to show you what it looks like because it's kind of fun. If you're going to make anything hollow in borosilicate, you're probably going to start out with a tube. So this was a four foot long tube and I cut that in the middle and then I've been pulling points off of it. A point is the handle that you get to hold your glass by. And in boro, you want two handles, one on each end. So I've got a nice handle going over here. I'm going to pull another point over here so that I have a little bubble in the middle that looks something like that, except a little smaller. This would be for something bigger than that cup. So I'm kicking it sideways a little bit just to spread that heat out. But I can't kick it sideways too much because this tube has gotten a little short and my hand is in the way. I don't really want to heat up my hand. So you can start to see that getting hot and I can kind of feel it moving. And I'm going to come out of the flame and then stretch that. I'm trying to keep both ends on center. And then I'm just going to keep some tension on that until it cools. So now I have a nice little bubble that I can make a foot out of. I'm going to balance that precariously there. When glass is hot, if you put it on something cold and metal, it'll crack it right there. So I want to keep that hot part up off the table. So this is my nice little pod now. And this part will cool off pretty, pretty quickly. I'm going to speed it up just a little bit. So if I try to heat this thing up while it's closed, that air inside is going to expand and a little bubble will shoot out the side and make a little hole. And I don't really want that to happen, so I'm going to open up this end of it. I just scored that and then I'm going to snap that. So then I'm going to get in here and make two little constrictions on either side. If you're familiar with stuff that happens in the hot shop, this is like my jack line. So I'm going to make a little constriction on either side of the bubble so that the flame doesn't lick over into this really thin, skinny little handle. And I'm just pulling really gently and just kind of letting that glass condense down so it's a little bit thicker right there so that if the flame does hit it, right there, it won't start wobbling around a whole lot. And then I'm going to hang out and let that cool on center, hopefully. That's the plan at least. And then I'm going to flip that around so that the open end is in my right hand. And I'm going to make my last little constriction over here. And I'm just blowing and pushing, blowing and pushing. Get that back on center some ways. So that's my setup for a foot. This part is going to end up being that little avolio part there. So I'm going to take that off right now. I'm going to break open this end 
so that when I close that off, I don't have a vacuum in here so that I can actually gather up glass from this handle and stick it to the bottom. And I'm doing this pretty much just the way that I did those constrictions at either end. I'm heating that glass, pulling a little bit and letting it gather up and get thicker right there. So I'm going to just let it get thicker and thicker and thicker until it closes off. So you can see that that's closed off now, that solid glass there at the bottom. Got my special little brass thingy tool that I made. And I'm going to get this super hot and then squish this back to make a little flat disc on the top. I'm going to gather up a little bit on this rod and then stick that right in the middle of that little disc and stretch it out. And this will be that narrow part. And then I'm going to get back in there and make a little ball. So I'm just heating and pushing. So now I want to flip this around so I can work on opening it and making it flat. I switched hands and then I'm going to get kind of a kind of a strong flame going here and I'm going to flame cut this. So I'm starting to see it move. It's getting hot. I'm going to start pulling and that's going to thin out that glass right there. So it's getting thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. Right now it's probably thinner than paper, almost cellophane thin. You can kind of see it wrinkling. I'm going to make sure this is on center and I'm going to keep that hot while I'm doing that because if I let that cool, that'll turn into a vacuum and it'll suck in. And then I'm going to heat up just the front there, stick this to it and pull it away and that'll open it up. That's not the tidiest one I've ever done, but it'll work. So I could just get this hot and spin it from there, but it's not very centered right now. It's kind of lumpy looking. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time just straightening that up. And then I'm going to heat up mostly just behind the lip so that the lip doesn't get any thicker, but I'm still getting heat into the body of the thing. And when that starts to really heat up, I'm going to start to spin fast and I'm going to turn inward toward the flame so that the flame is shooting on the inside. And you can start to see it spinning open. And that's quite hot on my hand. good enough. I'm not actually going to do anything with this thing, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. And it's really hot on my poor little hand. So I'm going to make sure it's kind of flat-ish and then give it a little flash. And that's how I did this one over here. The next thing I'm going to do is show you how I bend these little arms. These are the little arms that go on this thing. So I have one ready to go and I'm going to make another one to match this side. And the way I'm going to do this, I drew out the shape of the thing that I want to bend on the kiln shelf here. This is a piece of kiln shelf, it's sort of like a, like a pizza stone, same, pretty much same material. And I drew on there in graphite and graphite is able to stand up to the heat of the torch pretty well. So I can stick this to this little elbow. So I made a little elbow out of the same diameter glass as this cane. And I'm going to temporarily attach it to the elbow and then bend it with the torch. So I'm going to make a cold seal to stick this down to this little elbow. I have my kiln shelf on a Lazy Susan so that I can turn it to get at what I need to get at more easily. 
I've got that stuck down. I'm going to make a nice bushy flame and just kind of sweep that over my piece of cane and very, very gently heat it. I don't want to heat it so much that it melts into a little puddle on there. So I'm heating and then, whoops, came right off there. Stick it back on there real quick. My cold seal was too cold. So I'm heating a little bit and then bending, heating a little bit and bending. to do it with the twisty cane because the twist gets tighter wherever it gets bent and it looks really pretty. See, aren't you glad I only am making you watch one of these? Imagine having to watch four of these, plus the circle. My God, she'd be here all night. So I've got it most of the way where I want it. And then I'm going to stretch it out a little bit so it tapers. So I'm going to stick another rod to that. And then heat that and stretch it. So I want to put that somewhere around there. I'm going to kind of eye it up first and then come in there and I'm going to heat up my little bend more than I'm heating up the thing I want to stick it to because I want to be able to move it from this thing without distorting this other thing that it's sticking to. So stuck on there, push it around a little bit, get it so it looks kind of close to the other ones. I have lots of leeway. I can mess around with it a whole lot. So it looks like approximately what it ought to look like. And then I'm going to remember that this one is probably kind of hot still-ish, slightly. It's not terribly hot. Oil cools. cools pretty quickly. So that's a cold seal right now. That's a very delicate joint until I bridge it and melt it in. So kind of careful of it. I'm going to heat up just that end. Stick that on there. And then take it where it needs to go. I want to make sure I melt it in from both sides because if there's any kind of little crease in there, that's, it'll crack right there every time. So then I'm going to remember which one I put on first. I think it was this front one. And I'm going to melt in that connection first. And I actually felt it crack because that was a cold connection. So I'm glad I got to it when I did. Because I can just fix that crack. And melt that in and go on with my life. Not worry about that crack. So that's all melted in now which means I don't really need that little bridge anymore because I'm not going to mess with that part. So I'm going to break that bridge right in the middle. Just pull that out of the way. And again, I'm heating up the thing that I'm sticking on more than the thing I'm sticking to. So that's tacked on there. And then get this one tacked on there and unstick that from the other one. And then if you want to just tune out for a minute, I'm going to cover that thing with dots, but I'll be as quick as I can. And then I'm going to squish him on there, wind my way out of the torch flame. He's kind of on there pretty good. And then because I want to make sure that that 
seal is really sealed on there. This is great. I'm going to bridge from one of his fins up to the top here. And I'm just heating in that weld just so I know it's secure. I'm also shaping it up a little bit with the flame. You can move glass around with the flame. That's one of the coolest things about Boro is that you can actually sort of use the flame as a tool. So glass will pull, you can pull with the flame. Glass will kind of come toward the flame. So if I have like a mass on the side and I want to move it over to this side, I can heat up that mass and then draw it over to wherever I want it to be. So you can really fix up the profile of things really nicely that way. All right, seal is installed. Let me get that stuck on there. And then I'm going to add the teeniest little stitch so that the other side is stuck down. And then I'm going to melt that in. And those are far enough away from each other that when I'm working on one, the other one's not going to move. This is going to be a hot seal because this is holding the entire weight of the stem. And then I'm going to stick a foot on there. So it has to be really secure. I'm going to leave just sort of a little point on there. I'm getting both of those things really, 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 really hot. Because I only get one chance at this. Actually, I don't get one chance. I could just take it apart and stick it back together again. But I'd like to get it done in one shot. Because I don't want to pull it apart and stick it back together again. That's a pain. Push and pull a little bit and then come out and turn and try to keep that thing on center. So the cool thing about this, if I was to try to just shoot flame at that cup, this thing would crack like crazy. But because I've left a little point sticking off of it, I can really get away with putting things together this way. So it's a totally okay to heat up this point because it's far enough away from the body of the cup that I'm not going to get any heat sort of leaking over there and causing anything to break. I'm just going to do the same thing I just did, but with the cup instead of the foot. Just getting both of them really, really, really hot. Sticking them together, pushing and pulling. So I'm going to stick that in the flame, go all the way around if possible, push and pull, and then come out and keep that thing on center. That's the whole deal.